My government has always been focused on tackling the challenges of the here and now in a way that builds for the long term. Helping people with cost of living pressures while investing in making our future here in Australia is the theme of the last budget, but it's a theme of the last two and a bit years as well. We do this as a united team, a true Cabinet government. And I'm proud of our government's achievements, but I'm also proud of the way in which we have conducted ourselves as a government that has proper cabinet processes, that has a ministry of which I am so proud. Delivering for Australians, of course, is our number one priority, relieving cost of living pressure. But we've also been an incredibly stable government. Uh, no government in living memory has had the same cabinet and ministerial positions uh, for its first two years in office. Indeed, the last time that government changed hands in this country was Tony Abbott in 2013, and the Prime Minister didn't make it to two years, let alone uh, ministers in that government. At the next election, I will be seeking to be the first Prime Minister uh, since John Howard in 2004 to serve out a term and to be re-elected as Prime Minister. Two people who have made an outstanding contribution to our government and to our country are standing with me here today in Linda Burney and Brennan O'Connor. I am proud uh, to call them my friends. I'm proud to have witnessed firsthand their passion for this nation, their determination to leave the country better for their contribution as members of parliament and as ministers. In recent times, I've had discussions with uh, Linda and Brendan about uh, their future, and they have informed me that they have decided to not contest uh, the next election as the members for Barton and the member for Gorton. As a result of that, they've also made the decision uh, to step down from the ministry uh, to enable a refresh and to enable uh, some new ministers uh, to be able uh, to take their place and to take us forward over uh, the coming months uh, before the election, which, of course, is due in 2025. Uh, this provides an opportunity uh, to refresh the front bench. And this morning I've spoken with the caucus chair, Sharon Clayton. Uh, nominations will be called uh, for uh, front positions to be filled in accordance with our caucus rules. And I intend to announce a new ministerial lineup on Sunday uh, in Canberra and then for uh, the new ministry to be uh, sworn in. Those who are uh, filling new positions uh, will be sworn in on Monday morning. Today, though, I want to focus on these two outstanding Australians who are standing either side of me today. Firstly, uh, Brendan O'Connor. Uh, you couldn't ask for a better colleague and friend than Brendan O'Connor, and you won't find a more decent human being. I deeply respect his judgment. I highly value his advice that I've sought, not just in his portfolio, but across a range of issues over a long period of time. And I'm extremely grateful for his friendship. Uh, we met when we were less grey. <laughs> And uh, back in Young Labor, right. uh, almost four decades ago. And in that time, uh, we have uh, stood side by side uh, from uh, the New South Wales branch and the Victorian branch <laughs> over such a long period of time uh, where uh, Brendan, uh, when uh, he worked for uh, the union movement, and when I worked in different roles as well. And Brendan followed me uh, very closely uh, into the parliament where we've served together uh, for more than two decades. I think Brendan's experience 
as a minister in the Rudd government and a cabinet minister in the Gillard government has served us well. I said before the last election that we would be the most experienced incoming Labor government in history since Federation. And Brendan has been a part of that. Uh, Recognising, I think, the benefits of that experience, but also being able to uh, avoid uh, perhaps some of the, the issues that were there uh, in the former government in which we were both proud to serve. Uh, Brendan has been determined, as uh, those of us who sat in opposition for nine years, three terms, to make sure that every single day counted as a minister. As Minister for Skills and Training, uh, Brendan has been instrumental in setting up Jobs and Skills Australia. Uh, this is the body that is designed to make sure that the labour market is fit for purpose, not just in a short term, but in five years, ten years' time uh, as well. He also negotiated and secured a landmark national skills agreement. Uh, this was the first in over a decade and was delivered uh, before any of the other national agreements that have been uh, signed up to by every state and territory. Uh, this is an extraordinary uh, achievement and his reforms to TAFE, putting TAFE back at the centre of vocational education and training, is something that has made a difference uh, to the private sector, to businesses, it's made a difference to government, but most importantly, it has transformed lives. We promised uh, fee-free TAFE uh, for Australians and uh, we... Uh, have more than delivered, uh, essentially doubled uh, what we thought we would be able to achieve. And there is no question that that is primarily because of Brendan's leadership uh, in this area. In making skills and training as important as university degrees, he's changed the way that uh, education, lifelong education, is perceived in this country in a way that is so important. Uh, so I do want to make um, the, the risk of... Uh, I'll give <laughs> Brendan uh, a, a chance here to... Uh, I'll speak about Linda, then Brendan will speak, then Linda will speak. Um, yeah. Brendan, of course, went through a great deal of personal tragedy in uh, losing Jody in 2018. Uh, he could have very easily, um, would have been understandable if he'd stepped back at that time. He made a decision along with Una, uh, his lovely daughter, uh, that he wanted to continue to make a contribution to our country. So I do want to uh, acknowledge Una uh, today as well and say that uh, Dad's going to have more time uh, to spend with you uh, as... Uh, very soon, uh, as someone who uh, my son's a bit older uh, than Una, uh, there'll come a time soon when uh, she won't want to spend as much time with you, mate. I'll give you the tip. I think it's starting to happen. Uh, so, so Brendan has made this decision in part to make sure uh, that his family has always been uh, so important uh, to him. And I do want to, uh, on behalf of... Uh, the Labor Party, and if I can be so bold as on behalf of the Labor movement, uh, but also our nation, uh, thank Brendan for what has been an extraordinary contribution. Now, everyone who meets uh, Linda Burney uh, shares in the joy of a company and the light of that wonderful smile. And anyone who has the honour of calling Linda a friend understands the great strength behind her warmth and the courage that is the essence of her grace. The discrimination, hardship and loss that Linda has had to overcome in her life are more than most of us can comprehend. Linda was born into an Australia where she was treated as a second-class citizen. Indeed, wasn't recognised. Yet her life is a record of profound firsts the first Indigenous student to graduate from her teacher's college, 
the first Indigenous person elected to the New South Wales Lower House, where she served as a minister, uh, but also rose to the heights of being the Deputy Labor leader in New South Wales. She then went on to become the first Indigenous woman elected to the Australian House of Representatives and the first Indigenous woman uh, to be the Minister for Indigenous Affairs. This is all remarkable proof that what Linda has drawn from everything that she has had to endure is not bitterness or despair. It is positive. It is one of hope and one of optimism for our nation. All of us who've served alongside Linda knows that she's someone who gives her heart and soul to the causes that she champions and the people for whom she advocates. Uh, I remember well a discussion uh, with Linda in my electorate office uh, suggesting that she might want to run, consider running for pre-selection <laughs> for the electorate of Canterbury, uh, which was at the time my local state seat after a redistribution. Uh, Linda became my local state member and at the moment she's my local federal member <laughs> after the redistribution put my home, as well as her home, uh, into the electorate of Barton. Uh, that has changed, it must be be said, with the, uh, with the redistribution again. Uh, Linda, Linda's humility is something that uh, characterises her record of just incredible, incredible achievement. Uh, Linda has uh, known great sorrow and events in her life which would have been too much uh, for some to bear. Throughout it all, uh, she has brightened every room that she has walked into and has never asked for anything, uh, just uh, asked for one thing above all, not just for her, but for First Nations people everywhere, which is respect. Not too much to ask for in 2000 and 24. We see that in, uh, in spite of the setback uh, of the referendum uh, last year, uh, she has continued uh, to advocate to make a difference to the lives of First Nations people. Uh, the decision to abolish the distrusted CDP and replace it with a real plan for real jobs with real wages and real training in remote communities. The new support she has delivered for Indigenous rangers for justice reinvestment and remote training, tools of community empowerment and self-determination, the historic and record investment in remote housing to tackle the problem of overcrowding and all of its flow-on consequences the long overdue creation of a National Commissioner for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children and young people, working to turn around the terrible rates of out-of-home care. For Linda, so much of this work and so much of politics <coughs> has always been personal, and that can mean setbacks and disappointments are more deeply felt. It does mean more tears of joy and sadness alike. But that passion, that empathy, that true connection have made Linda an inspirational minister as well as a wonderful friend. And we'll miss uh, her company around the cabinet table, uh, but her friendship, like the friendship of Brendan, will remain. And we'll always be grateful for the extraordinary example which these two fine Australians uh, give of why people should enter public life to make a difference.